Welcome into a Friday edition of Philly Voice Sports Bets. I'm Devin Caney, joined by Harry Mays and Aton Shander. Guys, we have another exciting weekend of sports coming up. No Eagles this weekend. They are on a bye. Uh, but let's get into the Phillies first. Game three of the Phillies series against the Padres. Phillies one and a half point underdogs in this one, but back at home at Citizens Bank Park. How are we feeling about this? Well... I'm going to take some uh, some batting props on this. I, I blew my batting props uh, going against the Padres players in game two, <laughs> and shame on me for that. But I looked into this Joe Musgrove cat. And I'll tell you what, this guy can pitch, man. He's, yes, he his can. last five starts, he's got an 093 earned run average, 29 innings pitched, only 18 hits, three earned runs, and 32 strikeouts. And you might say, well, he's probably pitching against donkey teams. No, not so fast. Two of those games were against the Dodgers. One was against the Mets. The other two were the Giants and the Cardinals. So he's facing some pretty darn good competition, as good competition as you may find in the National League. So I wanted to look up some of the guys, you know, their history against this cat. And two right-handers jump out to me. And they might be two guys that you wouldn't be thinking of. Castellanos, for instance, is 5 for 18 against Mus Musgrove. Uh, with a double and a home run. And the over a half a hit is plus 700. Count me in on that. And Jace, or, uh, Gene oh, that Segu must be a home run. What's that? Where Where are you finding plus 700 for Castellanos to record a hit? Not a hit, not a home run. Did I screw it up? I think you said hit for 700 my guess is that it's plus money for a hit but it's not plus 700 well, let me get well, let me get the number yeah, yeah, yeah. right that sounds like a home run number okay well you might be right because i'm doing this fast i gotta jet to a unfortunate I, I situation here today well we, um, we hope all is well with you jump jump in here uh eight time while i look this up with okay. something on the phillies so absolutely i think and you'll correct me if i'm wrong but i think you were looking at a hit and it's funny you were looking at hits because the one guy that i wanted to target was somebody who went long against Joe Musgrove the last time late June these two teams faced each other and and that's Schwarber so I think Schwarber minus 165 is both a solo bet that I'm going to play and I think that's a really good same game parlay piece here as well the other guy who went long against Musgrove that I think you could target even if you just wanted to do both of them together and that's probably better from a total basis standpoint would be Schwarber and Real Muto so now you've got Real Muto at plus 120, Schwarber at plus 125. Both of those guys at two plus total bases. The two guys who thrived the last time they faced Musgrove, that's plus 397. Now, again, play them individually, but a plus 397 same game parlay. Okay. I agree with you on Schwarber, but so you have Schwarber for a hit, not a home run. Correct. Schwarber's uh, two for 16 against this guy. Yeah, one of those one two was a home five. run. Yeah. Exactly, right. right. And and that's all I care about with Schwarber is the threat of power. That's yeah. all I care about, right? So so now you've got a guy who's already hit. And look, I'm just doing total bases too. So Harry, I, I, did you find the right number on that? Castellanos, uh, now it, it, it's, all, it's all different now. I must have been looking at the wrong category because he's minus 205 for over a half a hit. I'll still take it. Yeah, and I mean, look, Segura's they, minus 170. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was wrong. I know on Wednesday I was kind of predicting Castellanos to do something on offense, and I was wrong about that. But uh, I think now back at home, um, I think Castellanos can, can get some production in there. Um, and if the Phillies are going to do well against uh, Padres pitching this game, then they definitely need to get things going on offense. Um, and Ranger Suarez in for the Phillies. So, yeah. He does a little better than he did when he pitched for the Phillies uh, in the series against the Braves. Got to give him at least five. Yes. Can he, yeah. can he do that? Are you guys betting anything on that, on pitching, strikeouts, anything? Yeah, I'm going to stay away from, from K's, I think, Devin, and I'm going to try and just bet hits, right? So, again, mm -hmm. if, if I can do – and I'll, I can put it together here on the fly, but just off the top of my head, I'm thinking, all right, let me. what is four-plus hits – for both guys look like in a same game parlay. Because I, I think, look, I like the over here too, over seven and a half. One of these guys is going to give up some runs. It's probably leaning towards Suarez. I get that. But the reality is one of these guys is going to get rocked. And it's just really a matter of when. So if I look at four plus hits, you know, that's that's not terrible here for, for these guys right now. That's 
four plus hits for Musgrove, four plus hits for Suarez is a minus 105 same game parlay. I can do that. That's not bad. And Musgrove over five and a half strikeouts, minus 125. So if he lasts, if he lasts five, six innings, he's going to get that. Yeah. Do you think either of these guys, do either of you think either of these guys go complete six innings? Complete six innings. Probably not. No, last time I Ranger was in, he only went like a little over three. Right. Yeah. I don't think. No, I don't. Think Musgrove that. has faced the Phillies three times, and he's gone six innings each time. One of those was with the Pirates. Well, as long as Rob Thompson doesn't put Brad freaking hand in when he <laughs> swears out, I'm okay with with him not going that long. The biggest motivation in this game for Suarez or anybody else might be simply, hey, if you lose, you're really screwing Zach Wheeler over. Because yeah. they can't, right? Like they can't put Noah Syndergaard out down 2 1 in a game four scenario. It's got to be Zach Wheeler. You don't so, think? <laughs> look, Harry, I'm not sure they could put Noah Syndergaard out up 2 1 in this series. Yeah. Well, yeah. it'd be all hands on deck game four if they're up 2 to 1. Or down two to one. Right. Really? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, all right. Anything else on the Phillies before we get into some football? It's funny how one loss and one poor outing by one of your good pitchers shakes the fan base to its core. Oh, I know. I know, but that's Philly, right? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> Amazing. I'm, Amazing. I'm not too worried. That was a terrible, terrible inning. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think they get it back at home. I'm, I'm not too concerned. Yeah, Ranger Suarez isn't looking over at Austin Nola with any type of, like, memories about how he got his ass kicked in the driveway playing one-on-one basketball yeah. either. So. <laughs> yes, yes. Very good point. Um, all right, now let's get into football. Uh, Harry, I know you always have some good college football plays. Do you want to start with those? Uh, I've already uh, been on the over in Cincinnati SMU and Texas Oklahoma State, and I'm going to take a, a flyer on UCLA Love it. on Saturday afternoon, going to Eugene, getting six outright. Uh, give me yes, exactly. What is the money line for that, Eitan? I and mean, that now that you mentioned that, because DTR Charbonnet and my man Jake Bobo are going to be able to score on Oregon. I love the Bruins plus the six points. And if you give me a nice, tasty money line, I'll take that too, Aton. I think it's going to be north of 200. I'm just going to shop here for the best line, 202. Right, so FanDuel right now has it at plus 202, points bet at 200. Everybody else is just below that hmm. from what I see. So 202, and again, I was just about to say, because I'm on that as well, I'm just, I was just, it can't be below two to one. Like, I'm not taking that risk two to one but i love it and the stat that i found that i know is going to be right up uh your alley here Har. six and oh dogs are 17 five and one ats wow. when facing an opponent coming off a win of 10 plus points there's one of those super trends i love it well then don't get it on DraftKings because it is below 200 it's right plus 195 that's what i'm right saying now. 202 yeah. on fandle yeah, yeah absolutely that's why we shop everybody that's right that's it i love ucla there too, Me too. what else uh, we talked about Clemson earlier in the week. Got on them at, at 13 and a half. It's now 14 on it draft is 14. Kings. So yeah. I, I feel good about that. Look, I, I don't know what to do about this. I'll tell you the the real quick. I did run a little bit of a three, four leg round robin. So these are all whatever the spreads are Rutgers, Buffalo, Marshall, UTSA, Mississippi State, Kansas State. So those are the ones, but I, I don't know what to do with tonight's game. <laughs> Temple cannot score a lick. I know. And their opponent scores at will. Well, they also give up a lot of points. You can, I mean, teams have run all over Tulsa. Um, and their best win is against Northern Illinois, and that was in a squeaker. Uh, so they're not a really great team either. Um, you know, I'm staying away from it because, you know, obviously I'd love to see the Owls pull the upset. Uh, but I, you know, can they keep it close? They've been they've been keeping these games close until like the fourth First quarter, half. and then the I game know. blows up, and, they, and you look at the score, and you're like, man, they got their asses kicked. But if you <laughs> watch the game, they were in the game for three quarters. It's I'm like so they just melt it, down. Man. I know it. Yeah. I know it. I just wanted to look at the first half number and see if it made sense for Temple just because. Because I know I'll go the other side. I'll take Tulsa first half, and I'll be sitting there kicking my own ass. Like, why the <laughs> hell didn't I do exact? Temple, by the way, first half spread real quick before we move on is seven. Mm. Plus seven. Okay. Ah. It's plus 13 for the game, so that makes sense. Uh, I don't know. 
I don't yeah, know. I'm staying That's, away. By the way, last one I would say Ohio State. I'll take them up to 30. Oh, th- it is 30. That's fine. Wow. Okay. I got in at 29 and a half. I'm fine with that. Iowa's cooked. Yeah, they are cooked. Hmm. Um, I I got nothing in terms of college bets, but we can move on to uh, yeah, let's do it. NFL, right? The NFL. Carrie, I know last episode you said you weren't touching this week because it is a pretty bad week. Uh, it's a dog of- meat. <laughs> Sunday, I'll tell you that. There, there's literally no game on the NFL slate this week that I'm like, yeah, that's going to be a good one. Uh, Maybe Niners Chiefs. I I could show some interest in that game. Well, or, everybody's hurt in that game too. Yeah, so. and and that's a very yeah. heavily bet uh, side is the Chiefs apparently. So along yeah. with the Giants and the Buccaneers are a heavily bet team and the Jets. Yeah. I like the Jets. Mm-hmm. I like the Jets. Uh, yeah, is McCaffrey going to play for the uh, Niners? That was the big news last night. I, I that don't trade. know. Boy, the Our Carolina Panthers line. got a lot of picks, man. They did. That's what happens when you have coaches get – who is hiring all these Carolina coaches, by the way? <laughs> Do you notice that? Like, they have all these picks for compensatory stuff because their guys are getting hired. They're a dog-awful team, and yet guys are getting plucked left and right. <laughs> it's amazing. Once you're in the coaching fraternity, it's kind of hard to get out of it. You know what I mean? Right. There's always right. somebody there to, to pick you up. Yeah, it's true. It's yeah. true. All right, I'll jump in, Devin, though. What, what did you have first? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut in. No, no. You can go. Um. All right. So, told you about the Giants. They're at plus three. I, I'm fine with public being on them. That's that's okay. Trevor Lawrence, 0-3, straight up against the spread as a favorite. Doug Peterson, last three in Philly, was 9-19 and against the spread as a favorite. By the way, Jacksonville's 4-11. Straight up against the spread as a favorite since 2018. So these these are all just like losing and losing outright type trends. Mm-hmm. This is what I was telling Harry before we jumped on. A teaser. This, this is why you tease the Giants up to nine. Jacksonville has won by 10 plus points in only two of their last 39 games. Seven in their last 55. Ten in their last 77. Wow. You got to say two like Robbie Ellis though. I was trying to two. say it like, yeah, two. Milk. I'm coming for my boy Rob Ellis. <laughs> First Joe to camera, now Rob Ellis. <laughs> All angles here. Trust me, Rob. Rob will take the pub. Anybody, yeah. anything, right? Um, I also love the under in, and I love the under. I'm going to go a little aggressive here and go under 13 and a half team total for Washington. It's at plus 195 at BetMGM. Washington has scored 8, 10, 17, and 12 in their last four games. That's less than 12 points per game. Taylor Heineke doesn't change anything because Scott Turner, their offensive coordinator and their offensive line, those are the culprits more so than anything. Yeah. Um, and then I'll I'll give you these real quick too. Rodgers under three and a half rushing yards. Like Green Bay to win, the Neal is in play. Heineke over 13 and a half rushing yards. Yes. And then uh, we talked about this earlier. I'm just to remind the world, love the under 48 and a half in Dallas. I tell you, Washington may be better off with this guy at quarterback because he he's he's quick. He doesn't hang in the pocket like Wentz does. Yeah. And, you know, wait to the last second and then get sacked. Like he's going to move. He'll he'll get out of there. I agree. Uh, yeah. Like we saw him play last season, and, yeah. and he's. I it was I was surprised that it took them this long to go to Taylor Heineke. Except I don't like. Uh, I saw like something that he said he had plans to like go golfing. I never know if those things are satirical or not, but right. either way, I mean, they're already at rock bottom over there in the organization. So I guess the only way is uh, up for them. Um, I like Buccaneers because that spread is so big. On yeah. FanDuel, it's the plus 13. Like the Bucks, I mean, they just lost to the Steelers. So I know the Panthers are in complete disarray, but like, do we think that the Bucks are going to put up 14 points on them? Well, a lot of people do because according that they're, they're it's taking a lot of money on the Buccaneers. Tampa has that yeah. line moved? Um, was it 11 and a half? My, I have 13. You have 13. 13 okay. on Tampa. Yeah, so that, wow. that must have. Wow. Yeah. So I yeah I'm inclined to take the Panthers um, to cover at least. Yeah, they were a near cover last week against the Rams right until the end. Now, look, they, they you know, Jacob Eason, that was, that was on the road. Good. Exactly. And, yeah. But there was something to that where it's just the mental letdown of like, okay, it's the, it's the Panthers. Come on. And then it's also the fact that much like LA, you can point to Tampa and say, yeah, they're not meeting a lot of their expectations. Yeah. And that's a low total too. So taking a lot of points on a low total sometimes makes some sense. Yeah. yeah. 39 and a half. 
Yeah, some of the numbers this week. And then with the Jets-Broncos game, Jets are one-point underdogs. I mean, the Broncos have not played well. Um, I mean, the money line is only plus 100 for Jets. Yeah, Like, a lot of value, but... Yeah, something with that. I, I would put money on the Jets to win that game. They're both yeah. stinkers of games, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, but the Jets... are really yeah. not a lot to work with. Jesus. Here. The thing about the Jets, too, if you like trends here, and the Jets are a perfect team to target, and that's why it's like it's one thing to have a trend. It's another thing for the trend to make sense in a game plan here. But if you just look at what happened last year, right? 26 nothing. That was the shutout from the Broncos handing down the Jets that loss. Since 2005, teams that were shut out by non-division opponents then faced them in the following year. Nine and five straight up against the spread in rematches. But the kicker in all this is in those 14 games, the winning team or the, this team, pardon me, has averaged 31 rushing attempts for 153 rushing yards per game. Hmm. So there is like this inclined message that not only are we going to beat you, but we're going to beat the shit out of you on the ground. And that's <laughs> truly how you physically punish a team, right? Yeah. Well, you've got not one, but two guys the Jets can go to in the ground game here who, who they have gone successfully to. So I think that there's some pretty good rushing props available here to you, especially with Brees Hall. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, got to find something to make this slate of games uh, more exciting because they are not great. Um, well, if you're going to make me make a play, I'll take under in the Washington game, under okay. 41 and a yeah. half. Okay, Jumped in on that one. That's a good one. Yep. Washington um, just doesn't score. Yeah. Anyone have anything else they want to throw out? Harry, I, I know you got to go, so uh, I'll save the NBA three pointers for next week. Oh, wow! Six Kyrie, is two. The minutes. season's over. How Kyrie, long till Doc makes. gets fired? Right. Uh, when does he Look, get fired? It's work for everybody else. I know. So hopefully the next week. Yeah. <laughs> Can uh, I put all right. On that? All right, that does it. We will definitely get into more NBA bets next week. I feel like I need to see a little bit more uh, from every team, especially the Sixers, before being confident about those. Um, all right, Harry, Aton, thank you so much. Go Phillies. Got it. Go Phillies.